<clears throat> hey, I wanted to review some of the main points from this week, um, the Tuesday the 15th and uh, Thursday the 17th of October. Um, so we've talked about, um, we were talking about ADHD and um, we talked about, um, I guess, norepinephrine quite a bit and uh, as well as dopamine. One thing that we introduced in terms of this was um, uh, with norepinephrine and dopamine, um, in addition to having close synaptic receptors after they um, uh, bind to the, um, the uh, receptors and get sucked back into the terminal, um, there's, there are two enzymes, COMT and MAO, and both of these enzymes uh, will inactivate the norepinephrine, and this slows down transmission. Um, the same thing happens with dopamine. Um, and then also something similar happens with, um, with serotonin, although serotonin is not a catecholamine, it's just a monoamine, um, and so only MAO works on that. Um, so serotonin is um, a monoamine, it's a type of monoamine, but it's not a catecholamine. Dopamine has, is a monoamine, and it's also a catecholamine. It belongs to both families of molecules, and norepinephrine also is, belongs to the family of monoamines as well as the subfamily of catecholamines. <clears throat> um, in terms of ADHD risk alleles, we talked about um, uh, both on Tuesday and today that a lot of ADHD risk, that, that some ADHD risk alleles are involved with increasing dopamine. Yeah, so um, a, a lot of ADHD risk alleles um, uh, increase, um, uh, sorry, a lot of ADHD risk alleles decrease dopamine, um, and then uh, even more, we don't know what they do, but a small number increase dopamine, and that's a little bit confusing. Um, we brainstormed today a little bit about, you know, how that could be um, that um, some risk alleles might um, decrease dopamine um, uh, or might increase dopamine. Um, uh, but this is ultimately something that, um, while it's a paradox, it's not, it doesn't make sense. Um, in, at first glance, there are some theories about why it might be. Um, but those theories um, are at least, uh, we know, are um, partially incomplete, and a lot of them are lacking um, experimental evidence. Um, in terms of treatments for ADHD, um, uh, today we talked about Ritalin, um, which is a dopamine transporter blocker. Um, it's referred to as a stimulant because dopamine is involved in stimulating um, alertness and awakeness and also increasing urges to move. Although, interestingly, in ADHD patients, um, this stimulant, Ritalin, all often leads to decrease in hyperactive behavior and urges to move. A different medication that's referred to as a non-stimulant is a more recently developed one called adamoxetine that's a norepinephrine transporter blocker and increases norepinephrine. Um, there's some hope that these um, might actually treat different subtypes, but so far, at least when we look one gene at a time, there's not a clear link between a, one particular genetic risk factor and the effectiveness of one, of, of one treatment versus the other. Um, although looking at combinations of genes um, might yield more information. Also looking at um, people with different brain structural differences within ADHD or brain activity regions, differences within ADHD might um, give us some insight as well. That is um, ongoing work, um, as Maya talked about in the biomarkers um, uh, class period. Um, we reviewed the dopamine receptor classes. There's D1, um, which are stimulatory, and G2, which are inhibitory. Um, interestingly, even though they have opposite effects at the cells, they generally always have the same effect behaviorally. In the striatum, they always increase movement, and this is something that is, I know, very confusing, but dopamine dopamine inhibits action potentials in the stop neurons. Now, when the stop neurons do fire action potentials, they don't release dopamine. Um, but when they receive dopamine, they stop firing action potentials, and then you've stopped the inhibition. That is a, confus a confusing thing, but definitely something that you should know for the exam. Um, norepinephrine receptors, um, on the other hand, have actually some sort of different effects, both cellularly and in terms of behavior. Um, so one of the effects of norepinephrine um, one of the receptors is um, a GQ-associated or GO-associated receptor. Um, these can have complicated and mixed feelings with the cell, with mixed effects with the cell, but for the organism, generally lead to, when these are overactivated, feeling overstimulated and overwhelmed, and actually are associated more with um, uh, depression and anxiety, and don't seem to have much of a role in ADHD. Um, with alpha-2 receptors, they have a calming effect. They're inhibitory. They have a calming effect. 
that actually has some antidepressant effects, um, but also is involved in sort of focus and calm attention. Um, and the beta receptors um, also have some attentional effects. These are stimulatory, um, uh, but also have some in, in, in associations with um, activating stress, fight or flight responses, and so on. Um, so, um, as we talked about, COMT in MAO slows down the recycling of dopamine and norepinephrine, and MAO slows down the recycling of, of, uh, of just serotonin. Um, and so serotonin synapses, you're not going to find COMT there because it's not going to be effective, just monoamine oxidase is there. Monoamine oxidase inhibitors increase the amount of serotonin, dopamine, and norepinephrine. And we'll return to those a little bit when we talk about depression and depression treatments. Um, so yeah, so we talked about specific risk alleles for ADHD that I've sort of already mentioned. Um, uh, interestingly, either overactive or underactive COMT, as well as uh, underactive dopamine receptors. Um, and then in terms of the um, overactive or underactive COMT, um, there's over here this one idea that maybe there's sort of normal amounts of dopamine and then a little bit of an increase leads to problems, but more of an increase actually can rectify those problems. That is an interesting hypothesis um, that has some experimental data behind it, but that data has been also um, uh, very controversial. And there's not a clear consensus about whether this is really the case or not. Um, so what you should understand is sort of like why it's a little bit paradoxical and have some ideas about one or two potential reasons why um, a brain with more dopamine might actually um, do even better if dopamine uh, is further increased. The, um, the last thing that we talked about today is the Sobel study. In that study, they asked two questions. The first is just looking for physical anatomical differences in brains of people with ADHD versus controls. Um, and so the first comparison they did is comparing unmedicated ADHD brains versus controls, looking at the sizes of various brain structures. Um, and what they found is that the putamen, which is part of the striatum, is smaller in brains with unmedicated ADHD. Um, there are a number of possible interpretations of this. One is that maybe the develop, there's some developmental change early in the brain um, that causes the putamen to get small, and that might cause ADHD or be somehow other correlated with ADHD. Um, or maybe the, um, the fact that going through their teenage years with um, the wrong amount of dopamine in their brain, um, wrong is too strong a word, in a, in a different amount of dopamine than, than, than controls in their brain, might lead to the putamen getting smaller. Um, we, they then did a second um, comparison, looking at brains, uh, added an extra group, um, people with ADHD who had medication, stimulants that they were taking, and that they had been taking for several years, um, and then again measured the size of the putamen. What they found is that in those patients with medication, um, their, um, their putamen is larger than the putamen of people with ADHD who didn't take medication, and also more pretty similar to the size of the putamen in control subjects. The interpretation of this is that um, actually, um, first of all, that enhancing dopamine in an ADHD brain will help to sort of make the putamen grow larger. And it seems to indicate that, back to our previous uh, question from the same paper, that maybe there's not some sort of permanent change that happens in the brain to make it smaller in people with ADHD. Um, but um, or that a smaller reputation was causing ADHD, but it's really that the um, altered dopamine and the, um, and the leaving the brain throughout um, adolescence with um, an altered amount of dopamine causes a physical change in the brain structure. And if the dopamine amount is um, brought into a more appropriate level, that that can lead to um, uh, changes uh, and, and sort of restoration of a more typical size putamen. Um, this study... Um, as a lot of studies, it has some controversy and some um, criticisms associated with it. Um, one of the main ones, which is true of all, really basically all human studies, is that it's not really experimental. Um, it's just observational and correlational. And there may be, it may be that there's just um, a difference in the um, uh, different um, people with ADHD are not randomly choosing whether or not to take medication. Um, and so there may be some systematic difference or some average difference between the people who choose to take medication versus those who don't. It has nothing to do with a consequence of the medication, but instead is correlated with some other aspect of their choice to 
take medication or not. Um, so that um, uh, that's the last little bit that you need to know for the exam. Um, and then we'll um, talk a little bit more about ADHD um, and one other study that will not be on Thursday's exam um, on Tuesday and then move on to talking about depression as our next topic.